All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Started. All right. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, my, I am Tiffany Frost. I am the WBC, uh, New Growth WBC Director and um, New Growth uh, WBC puts on monthly webinars um, for education. And we are proud to have uh, Mr. Corey Gaiman with JCP CPA firm with us today. Uh, he's gonna teach us some do's and don'ts about um, business. So Corey, you can take it away. And if you need anything, this is a recorded um, presentation and it will be sent out afterwards. And I will be checking the chat for any questions you have throughout. Um, so go ahead and put that in the chat and then we'll answer those questions at the end. Um, so you can take it away, Corey. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Like she said, I'm Corey Gaiman from JCG CPA firm. We recently changed our name from the CPA firm. Um, we're, we have offices here in Southwest Missouri and uh, been had my own firm for eight years now. So we are uh, growing quickly and, and, and helping people in these rural communities. Um, were, were you guys going to have my presentation uh, presented up here on the screen? There we go. All right. So today what they've asked me to do was uh, kind of some go over some startup do's and don'ts. Uh, I, I find myself answering the same questions quite a few times. And, and sometimes we become the first stop for someone that just wants to start a business, which is a great thing. There's just some do's and don'ts. And there are some at an order that this needs to go. So I'm just going to uh, move right through this and, and we'll take some, some pauses or uh, some breaks for questions. Uh, Tiffany, as you see fit. And uh, I have a few subjects to go through here. Uh, on the agenda is we're gonna try to answer these general questions that I normally receive in an initial consultation. What is a business? I think we all need to have a base definition of that. Uh, when does business actually start? Uh, there's, there's some vague area on that as well. Who should we talk to first? Uh, you need to surround yourself with the team. So we'll talk about what that team needs to consist of. How do I keep track of the money? Of course, that's what everybody's concerned about. And then should I hire employees? These are just a few of the uh, many questions that we do get, but these are some of the most important ones you need to think of right at the very beginning. So we'll move next to the, uh, I just put a quick introduction up here. Starting a big business can be an exciting and scary time. There are many small details as well as big picture ideas to consider. It's always best to have a plan as you move into the self-employment world. That includes working through some steps and surrounding yourself with the right team. Let's review some basic questions everyone always faces. What is a business? Uh, if you can go ahead and move to the next screen as well. So the IRS defines a business as a trade or business is generally an activity carried on for a livelihood or in good faith to make a profit. Um, what they mean by that, because the IRS doesn't always speak English, is are you trying to make money? Uh, there's a big difference between a business and a hobby. A business is trying to make money. I will generally ask um, my business owners, okay, What's the plan to make money? Is there profit there? Uh, even as so as farmers are the same way because farming is a business. So are you a farmer trying to make money or are you just trying to feed your family and not sell the product? So the definition of a business is important. Uh, they can be structured in several different ways. And these are the three large picture ways that are broken down into more, more of course, but a sole proprietorship a partnership or a corporation. A sole proprietorship is an individual that does not um, incorporated with their state whatsoever. There's only one person in a sole proprietorship and you are working for yourself without uh, any partners or any stockholders or any shareholders of that sort. A partnership, very similar to sole proprietorship, is just two people that get together. Now they do incorporate with the state. A partnership could be both members work, both members manage, um, but it is a incorporated style business with the state. Then you have a corporation, which a corporation can be, have as many people as possible. Uh, small corporations are under 100 people, it can be an S corporation, 
or a larger corporation that could even be publicly traded on the uh, stock exchange. That's how that's what a corporation can be. Uh, all of these that are incorporated with the state actually become official, um, register with the Secretary of State and uh, have tax agencies that check in on them and have tax filing requirements. The only one that is the simplest one is a sole proprietorship. That sole proprietorship it doesn't have the state incorporation and it is fully on that sole proprietorship to report its income on its tax return. Uh, there's a lot more discussion to get into with those, uh, but that's on a case by case basis. It really needs to be discussed with your lawyer or your team member. So that does lead me into the next question. Uh, so just some do's and don'ts of this. Uh, set up a business plan. You know, you want to start with a plan of action. If you don't, you're going to miss something along the way. You want to consult with a team of professionals, which we will go over in just a moment. A team of professionals includes lawyers, CPAs, uh, business consultants, maybe bankers, maybe funding agencies or just business consultants like uh, New Age Growth. So uh, the last thing you would wanna do is make sure you conduct some market research. You wanna know if the business idea that you have, the thing that you're passionate about and that you do really well, is it going to sell? Is it going to sell in the market that you live in, the market that you want to be in? Um, sometimes we have a great idea, we're great at doing it, but nobody's there to buy it. So you gotta make sure you can sell your product. And, and I put on the don'ts on this one, just don't start advertising and making a bunch of money without a plan. That's where you could get into some trouble. You could not hold back money for taxes. You could not be correctly registered. Maybe your business needs a license and you didn't even realize that. Um, there, there's some research to do before you jump into business. So I can move us on to our next question. When does business start? And when, when I say business, I mean the activity of business. When are you conducting business? Well, it, the definition states that it starts actually when you start having some sales and incurring some expenses. So if we think back to our previous slide where a sole proprietorship doesn't need any registration, you could just start business today. You say, I'm in business and I'm going to start making some sales. That's not a great idea. But the point to this is, if you're not organized, that start date might have been sooner than you thought. And tax agencies are going to use that if they ever look back into what you've been doing. So if you were making money and had expenses for a couple of years, but you didn't realize that you uh, needed to be registered, you didn't realize that you need to report it on your tax return, the IRS could even go back and see, hey, you've been making money all this time. We want our, we want our fair share. So when does the business start is a very important concept. Uh, another part of this is a business needs to be um, <clears throat> correctly organized to get started. So if you don't have your funding in order, if you don't have your registrations in order, potentially, don't worry about the tax agencies, potentially you just won't succeed because you didn't put those things in order before you started. So as you're doing your research, as you're setting up your, your initial costs, you wanna think about when do I actually wanna start this business and start trying to make some money? So I'll move us to our next one. Who should we talk to? I think this is one of the most important concepts uh, that, that is misunderstood. So many, I'm a CPA and, and several of the, uh, the members I've listed here, a lawyer, business consultant, funding source, we all become the first stop occasionally. And, and the real answer to this question is, is all of us. A, a conversation needs started with each one pretty much simultaneously. The lawyer is gonna look into your business structure. He may even have questions with the CPA that you've chosen to make sure they're choosing the right path for you. A business consultant is going to help you with market research, it's going to help you with uh, possibly funding, it's going to help you with a business plan, which that business plan would then be used by your funding source or your banker. Uh, all, what I'm trying to say is all of these professionals are going to interact with each other, and they really should. They're going to have questions for each other, um, and through you, sometimes what's best is to Find one you like first, tell them you're starting a business. What do we need to do from here? That, and the, 
that lawyer is going to have a certain level of activities he needs to do for you. And the CPA and the banker and the business consultant can't do for you. Um, so what I would tell you is the very first thing you'll need is that operating agreement from the lawyer. So after you've decided, yes, I'm in business uh, by myself or with the partner, talk to the lawyer, set up the operating agreement. That's an actual business contract for how your business should be run. CPA cannot do that. It's, it's law work, legal work, and it takes a legal license to do that. A uh, business consultant can't do that unless they are a lawyer, which they could be. And a banker definitely cannot do that for you. Uh, so that operating agreement really starts the business on paper, if you will. Uh, and then move when you move from that point, a CPA can help you get your tax ID number, your registration numbers. Um, they can help you to uh, get everything set up on the on the IRS side, on the state side. Um, then the, the lawyer itself, you'd go back to the lawyer. The lawyer would do the registration with the state. So that, that's why I say sometimes these things circle back on each other. And it's important to, to uh, choose those professionals. And a lot of times referrals between them it can be the best way to go because they already know each other. Um, I have multiple lawyers that I, I work with and, and have uh, shared clients with. I have many bankers for sure that, that call us and send clients to us and we send clients to them. We understand the significance of that uh, building that good relationship between the professionals so um, the the best dues on this one are going to be talk to that lawyer get the operating agreement and then go from there so we can move on to our next slide now so how do we keep track of the money this is always the biggest question we get of course um, number one you need a separate business checking account now there are a few steps before you get there, like we just covered in the last slide. You'll need the operating agreement from the lawyer. You'll need a tax ID number from the IRS that the CPA can help you with, or the lawyer can help you with. Um, and you'll need a fee, you'll need to be registered with the state, which the lawyer can help you with. Uh, but that separate business checking account is super important, even if you're not a big corporation, if you're not even an LLC, if you just want to stay sole proprietorship, you need to keep the expenses and income separate. You don't want to pay taxes on money that you did that was not income, and you definitely want to catch all of your expenses. Uh, from our standpoint, helping you to keep books, you, it's very easy when everything is isolated into one account or multiple business accounts, but no personal transactions in those accounts. So a very easy way to do that is to start a QuickBooks. Um, QuickBooks is an online program or another similar software, of course. It's an online program. It's a program you could download to your computer. Uh, it's what we use at our office for our bookkeeping clients. And it just allows us to keep track of your, your data throughout the year, it allows you to Make, see where you're at. It does help you with your business management, but is also important when you go to do your tax return. Uh, on that note, you could hire a CPA or bookkeeping firm to do that for you. Many people do their own, but then many you know, hire a bookkeeping firm. We work with all kinds. We work with some that take care of their stuff throughout the year if they can stay organized, but then also we do books for people throughout the year. And those clients, what we try to tell them is that focus on your business, let us help you with the bookkeeping. But if it's just something you can handle on your own, then you can't, many people can. And then the last big don't is that I wanna put on this slide is no cash. Don't pay with anything for cash. Uh, and, don't, and you can accept cash of course, but put it straight to the bank. So cash is the hardest thing to track. It's, it's, it's almost impossible, it really is. Um, to have legitimate IRS deductions, you would have to have a signed receipt, dated receipt, uh, and then the cash would have to be booked into your QuickBooks. And it's, it's difficult to do that even. So I tell all my small business owners, number one, don't use cash. You can accept it. You don't want to not accept it for your services, um, but don't use it for expenses. When you write a check or use your credit card or debit card, you're creating a permanent record at the bank. And that permanent, if you lose all of your records, that permanent record is still at the bank inside of your checking account, usually with images on your bank statement even. So don't use cash. Okay, we can move on to the next one. Last question, 
that I want to go over is should I hire employees? Well, the big question here, and I put it at number three down, is how much do you want to work as the owner? Have you created this business so that you can have a job? And that, that's perfectly fine. Then maybe you don't need employees. Maybe you're able to do most of the work yourself. Uh, and that if that's the case, employees don't need to be part of what you're doing. Uh, if you feel like business is going great and you want to hire employees to do some of the work for you, or if you are more so investing in this business, you just started it up and you want to have someone else run it, well, then you might need an employee. So this leads us to a very big question of a contractor versus an employee. Many of my smallest business owners think that they can just choose to 1099 or W-2, those workers. It's not a choice. It is a, it is a determination in, based on facts and circumstances. So if you have an employee that you control, that you dictate their schedule, you tell them what, they, what to do during the day, you give them tasks, they report their hours to you, you pay them hourly, that's an employee and they should and must receive a W-2. So receiving a W-2 means that they will have taxes taken out of their paycheck. So you have to calculate those taxes. Then you have to report those taxes to the IRS and to the state. There are four different reporting agencies that need information from you on a quarterly basis and payments made on a regular basis. Employees are difficult. The, the, the process of maintaining payroll and filing the correct reports is difficult. This is where usually hiring a CPA or a bookkeeping or payroll firm to do that for you um, is necessary. Now, that does cost. So there's a cost for that professional. That's why I see many small business owners just diverting to a contractor. Well, a contractor, just a quick definition of that, is a worker that comes in and provide that does a job for you. You do not dictate their daily schedule. You do not dictate what tasks they do. You say, this is a project I need done. They do it for you. They present you with a bill and you pay that bill to them. Uh, you still need their information so you can give them a 1099 at the end of the year. But the, the relationship comes down to control. You're not really in control of their day-to-day -day activities and a contractor has the ability to work for other clients as well. An employee generally only works for you. Costs of payroll would include extra taxes you'd have to pay. One of the big things is an employee, the employer actually covers half of their social security and Medicare. So that's an additional seven and a half percent on top of what you're paying them. Um, then you have the cost of if you need to hire a payroll or bookkeeping firm to take care of it for you. Uh, generally, that could be from $100 to $500 a month. I mean, it depends on what you have. It could be even more, just depending on what you have and, and what your needs are. And then my last question, how much do you want to work as the owner? I, everyone can come at this from a different angle. Did I create a job or is this something where I want to, I want to sit back, I want someone else to run and I just wanted to create the business. And then I reiterated this on the bottom line, no cash. This is the worst place to pay cash. If you pay cash here, it is virtually untrackable and you, you will not be able to deduct it on your tax return. And they could be in trouble for not reporting it. And you could be in trouble for not uh, reporting it correctly. So no cash for employees. So that, that was the last question I had I, to, to review. And, and I, I'd like to, if, if there are any questions to be answered, um, but I did want to leave on that, on that quote, sorry, that next slide <laughs> on this quote of, uh, I really like this from Walt Disney. The way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing, just do it in the right manner, do it in the right order. Um, but I, I, I promote small businesses. I am a small business owner. I, I think that's the backbone of our country and I think it's the way to go, um, but do it right and don't try to cut corners, especially with taxes, especially with legal setup. So uh, I think this would be a great time, Tiffany, if, if we have any questions that have come in, I'd love to, to answer a few questions. Thank you so much, Corey. I've been um, monitoring the chat and the question and answers. I've not had any there, but we are open to that. So anybody can um, put, a, put a question in the chat or anything. Um, uh, or if you have any thought of a question as you've gone through. Um, I just want to say that um, I appreciate it. And um, 
There is a question. How often do people go from soul to corp because of what they've learned the hard way? I can see it here. How often do go from what they've learned the hard way? Way. Well, uh, so what I have seen in the past is someone go in and try to set everything up on their own. Um, they Maybe they were a sole proprietor and they just did it the old way. And then they thought, I need to be a corporation. And they set it up on their own. I'm, I'm going to interpret this question that way, that they learned the hard way because they ended up in a C corporation or they ended up in a um, something they shouldn't have been just because they tried to do the registrations themselves. Uh, I, I think you need, you need a lawyer and a CPA's advice to make sure you're doing that the correct way. It, if that C corporation can end up being double taxed and that is the default. So that's, that's the hard way that I would uh, interpret that as. And I can just answer a couple of these as they come in, if that's okay. So benefits are different of S Corp and C corporations and LLC. So an LLC, I, would, I do want to touch on that for a minute. It, it's commonly misconstrued what an LLC is. It's a limited liability company. So that's a state designation, a state, um, a state registration. So an LLC can actually be a partnership, a sole proprietorship, or an S corporation. Okay, so an LLC is a legal designation and it doesn't really help you on any taxes, but it does, it, it should protect you legally. And I would let lawyers, you know, put their opinion on that, but it should separate you from your business legally. Then let's take that LLC and what's it going to be taxed like? I'll, I'll compare uh, the two here, S corporation and C corporations. Those are not necessarily LLCs, but an S corporation could be. An S corporation is supposed to be sort of like a hybrid between a C corporation and a partnership. It has the benefits of a big corporation and the benefits of a small partnership. So an S corporation is, it must be under a hundred members and uh, the, the income from the business passes through to the individuals that own it. So it's only taxed once. The downfall of a C corporation is it's actually, the income is taxed at the corporate level and then the only way to get it out to an owner is through a dividend. And then it's taxed again at the dividend at the individual level. So a C corporation actually double taxes the same dollar. And so it's it's not ideal. And, and many times small business owners get stuck in those because of the registration. And it can be very hard to get out of it and fix it. And I think that goes back to why you were saying, you know, get that team together, get that. Absolutely. That uh, legal advice, all of that to make sure that um, you understand the difference and you right. don't get stuck in something that's being taxed um, right. Absolutely. multiple times. Uh, another For sure. Question. And so another question is coming I'd really like to touch on, and this is an important question. Is it still necessary to hire a lawyer if you're working with it as a small business development center advisor and have a CPA? And I'm going to say the answer is yes because that small business development center cannot create a legal document, neither can an accountant or CPA, and you must have an operating agreement. So the best way to do that is to hire a lawyer to put that operating agreement together and register you with the state. Now that could be all they do for you. Let's admit it, the lawyer is probably the most expensive part of this process. Um, the, you, the business development center is usually free or cheap and and the accountants are next level uh, but you must have that operating agreement and it is a legal document so cpas and accountants have done those before and i'm telling you it's it's illegal it's it's legal practice and so we cannot do it so it is it is still important but but you could keep the role limited if you're worried about cost and restate what and why the yeah. operating agreement and, and i'm glad they're they're uh, kind of drilling into this because this is an important mm -hmm. uh, part. So an operating agreement is the agreement between partners. And when I say partners, it could be just one person. Okay. But it's the, it's, it's the, um, the description of how business will be done in that business. And it's on paper. So sometimes if we talk about a partnership, it's more important in a partnership than it is for an individual. A partnership is a lot of times between friends, between um, family members. And, and in those cases, 
you need to write down and sign in front of a lawyer who's going to take how much money, who's going to share in the expenses, who's putting in how much money. It all needs to be very uh, expressly recorded so that when someone does get upset and it's just going to happen, when someone disagrees, you have something to fall back on. That's why you should want it but you also need to have it. The bank is gonna to wanna to see it. Every lender everywhere is always gonna to wanna to see it. Um, and it, it should be part of your, your corporate records. And I know that's something you that can was make changes asked for. To, I'm sorry, Tiffany. You can make changes to that over the years as well. Uh, so it's not like it's in stone forever, but it is in stone. You just, you could add to it or, or adjust it throughout the years. And that is one thing um, when COVID hit and there was a lot of um, opportunities for money through the SBA, that was one of the documents that yep. they did yep. request from yep. um, people that was seeking um, that information. Right. And um, a lot of them didn't have it. it too. An individual, um, even whoever you're in a relationship with, you know, if they're part of the business, marriage, things like that, that operating right. agreement is is um, a very important document, right. especially right. like Corey said, in a partnership, um, right. if you're, you're looking at going in, no matter who it's with, really spelling out um, right. what that is. And it's funny you, you say marriage uh, that I've always heard, you know, it's, it, it's like you're marrying your partner mm -hmm. uh, because then that, and that's what the operating agreement does. It makes it all legal and it, it, it puts on paper what you've already agreed to for that marriage to work. So that's the, that's the point of it. Okay, any other questions? Those were all very good questions. Thank you. Um, well, I just wanna say thank you again to, to Corey and the um, JCP CPA firm. JCG, so, actually. JCP. Yeah, that's all right. CPA firm, lots of acronyms there. Right, um, I had one more slide on there if you wanna move oh, sure. to the last slide and it shows my information. There you go. I show up and yeah, shows my logo and, and our information there. Um, you can check out our website and then that's our phone number uh, to call. And you and we have, like I said, six offices around Southwest Missouri, uh, including Gerard, Kansas as well. But Nevada, Missouri, El Dorado Springs, Stockton, Bolivar and Springfield. And um, you can check us out on our website to to know, learn more about us. And you can call and have a consultation with one of my professionals if you need it. And we give, you know, if you have just a quick question about where to start, um, just give us a call and we can we can point you in the right direction at least. Yes. And um, again, um, I am Tiffany Frost with the uh, New Growth Women's Business Center Director uh, Program. And we um, assist. So when he was talking about those or the um, Small De Business Development Center, we're very similar to that. We focus on women-owned business, um, but we can help any business. Um, but we can really help you get that business plan together, that first step of really thinking through that process and getting it together and then um, help you build that team you need to make your business successful with lawyers and CPAs and other team members and anything to really just circle around and support your small business. Um, we're here to help you. Uh, the Women's Business Center is located in El Dorado Springs, Missouri. Um, I'm going to put my email and the phone number in the chat. Um, so if you know of anybody that's interested, wants to talk um, about business planning, um, getting into that, we will we can help with that. So again, I'm going to put that my email in the chat. Um, I appreciate everybody's time. And this is recorded and will be going out as well. It will also be on our website, the New Growth um, women's business center website. So all of our recordings um, go on there. So you can have access to them at any point in time. If you know somebody that's missed it, if you just want a refresher, if you miss some of the information, you can always go there and find it. Um, so I look forward to um, meeting with Corey again and learning more from him. And thank you guys so much for spending your lunch awesome. with us. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you.